safety and trust, creating a holding space. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Gina Wong. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time in this video talking about attachment and connection and building safety and trust with our clients. Um, you know, the growth, fostering relationships, the connections and the disconnections, the ruptures and the repairs. Um, they are so much a part of our work with our clients. Um, I have quite a bit of training in circular security, which is a attachment relational focus, actually a parent intervention that I have found to be extremely valuable in working with clients. And so I wanna share uh, some of those thoughts with you. Um, so the ability to build safety and trust, um, you know, some might call that therapeutic container, some might call like Winnicott, the holding space. Um, and, and it's a very, very important aspect, if not the most crucial part of therapy. Um, and in actually all our relationships, parenting and spouse and friends as well, that we have that feeling of safety within the relationships. And within that safety, we can make mistakes, we can share vulnerabilities, we can um, tolerate discomfort, all those kinds of things that is uh, very important in therapy and therapeutic alliance. So cultivating a safe space, to me, begins at the very first contact with clients. It's not, you know, in the first session. It's when they hear your phone message. How invitational are you when they see your ad or however it might be that they come into contact with you? So, you know, being mindful about the way that we present ourselves to the public. And then when they leave that message and how we get back to them and just the, you know, the, the ability to not tell them what they need. And, you know, I, I, it's hard to even describe, but just, you know, being relational and intentional and listening. And often, you know, my area specifically, I do specialize in working with maternal mental health an illness and you know I genuinely feel when a mother contacts me I know how much courage it took and takes for her to reach out and you know to, to talk about an appointment or just to ask questions and so I always approach it with this um, recognition of the tremendous courage that it takes and I think that there's something about that that compels um, individuals to feel like um, heard or acknowledged because it is, it is very difficult for anybody to call or to reach out and make the first session and try to get to know you or talk about what their issues are. Tremendous courage. And so, you know, that's one of the things that I always think about and even convey sometimes in the first communication without it sounding, you know, false and it, never does because I'm genuine about it. Um, and so things like that, I think, notice the way that you interact in those set up times for the session. Um, and being very aware of where you are. It's interesting because we think about that connection and disconnection with our clients as, you know, kind of following their lead. And of course that's really important but we can actually lose a lot by not being in touch with where we're at. So some therapeutic characteristics that are important for us to try to embody is to actually be embodied within ourselves. So in a whole body kind of way, when we're listening, we're hearing and we're also witnessing what might be happening in their body we're speaking or we're asking about that, but we're also attuning to what's happening within our own body. And we're hearing for what's going on for us as we're listening and being present. And when we can get to that space where it's two people interacting 
and being aware of what's being brought up or where we're at, that awareness helps us to be even more attuned to the client. And with that, you know, sometimes it's it's described as intuition. You know, you're dropping into yourself in the whole body and you're listening to the client from that space that the connection feels very uh, genuine and deep. Sometimes, you know, there's loss of even linear thinking. It's a dropping of theory sometimes and just being present. And so that's a very important part of being mindful of the connection and attunement and attachment. And clients feel more seen and more heard. You know, it's not when we can tell them the theories or pontificate or, you know, enact a theory perfectly or have that question just so. It's when we're present and there in this whole body kind of way that I think really, um, yeah, generates a very authentic connection. A lot of, um, you know, a lot of my training and ideas around this area, as I, you know, talked about circle of security, but also, you know, there's work with trauma and attachment. Uh, one of my favorite books is the attachment focused EMDR, um, healing relational trauma. And that's by Laura Parnell. You don't have to be trained in EMDR in order to read the book or understand it, you know, pulling up the parts about relationality and attachment and how, you know, the therapist characteristics and what we can do in order to connect with our clients as much as we can is a very valuable part of that book. And there's, you know, there's sort of lots of um, different trainings and books, but I thought I would, you know, kind of share that we are, we are the tool and the tool is the whole being of us and our own um, ways of understanding our own attachments is also critically important. And I'll, and I'll speak to that in the next video as well. So thanks so much. I hope this has been valuable for you.